Oh, I think I broke it. Hello YouTubers, welcome back to the workshop. A uh, project I'm going to do for you this week is just a simple bowl. Uh, somebody recently commissioned me to make three bowls. They gave me the wood, they've got some beautiful... I did say Sportwood Beach, but this is an actual fact, Sportwood Ash. I've already turned one. It was a pedestal bowl with some beautiful markings on it. So the first thing I did was got it onto the bandsaw and cut it into a circular shape. And here I have it mounted on my lathe. I have screw chuck on one end and my revolving centre on the other. So now I have to rub a lot of wood away to give me the bowl shape that I'm looking for. The bottom of the bowl will be on the left of your screen. And obviously the top of the bowl will be on the right hand side. And what I am aiming for is almost like a, a large flower pot shape so it'll be that curved swept up to a big rim at the top so i've got a lot of wood i need to get away very quickly here so i've been quite aggressive with the cuts here i'm coming with a push cut down which is taking a hogging a lot of wood away very quickly and you see my tool rest moving there i never tighten that up So again, I've got a series of push cuts and pull cuts, just quickly ripping all that wood away. I think bolt turning can be quite wasteful. You pay £20 for a bowl blank, and about £19.50 of it ends up on the workshop floor. So you see there on the right hand side of the screen where I'm already starting to form that rim which is going to be the top of the bowl and I'm getting somewhere close now to the actual shape from the base where that just flares up this wheel when it's finished will show off the side of this bowl and also all that lovely figure that's in that wood so even if the bowl's full of fruit you'll still be able to see the side of the bowl and see that lovely sporting in the edge so now i come down i'm getting very close to where i want to be i'm taking some more gentler cuts some finishing cuts just gently just taking that way to where i want to be i did come down there and as i come down i had like a, a small bead at the bottom and I, which i thought was quite nice i didn't plan to do it to start with but I thought that looked quite nice, so I've left it on there. And now I'm just defining the rim at the top of the bowl. And here I'm just coming in there with a very fine, delicate cut, sharpen the chisel up just to get a really nice finish on that. Just defining the edge of the bowl. I'll turn that right down to the bowl shape I wanted. I burnt a line in there just to accentuate, accentuate that bottom rim. And now that's sanded up. It's incredibly smooth, that is. That really is sanded up nice. Ever so smooth, lovely. Sand the sealer. Rain coming out there, lovely. So a quick buffing. Beautiful. And a bit of wax. Beautiful shine come on there straight away. That's lovely. Oh, beautiful grain, beautiful, beautiful shine. So that's the whole of the outside finished. So what I'm going to do now is turn it around in the lathe and hollow the bowl. So 
So I've opened up the centre already with a large force a bit. I'm sure there are a lot of purists that rip their hair out every time I do that. I just find with a bowl like this, it is out of balance. I can't get a great deal of speed. I'm only running at 420 at the moment because it is very out of balance. There's a lot of hardwood on this side and the sported wood is on that side, which is very light and that's very dense. And it throws it all out of balance. So when I get to centre, because I'm going to slow, it's very difficult to turn. So I find it a lot easier to just take it out with the forstner bit before I begin. So now to hollow in the centre. I've had what's commonly known as tenon failure. The tenon that I turned on the back of the bowl was being held in the chuck and the strain of hollowing the bowl. There's quite a lot of force gets put on there and actually sheared the tenon straight off the wood. That wood where it's all sported it is quite soft, quite punky wood. I mean once it's been turned, sanded, sand and sealer and wax put on there it will stabilise it and it will last quite a long time. It certainly lasts longer than me. But at the moment where it was just the soft wood it sheared off. So what I've done is I've cut another piece of ash, I've glued it, I brought my tail stock up to hold it in place and I've left that overnight to dry. So what I'm going to do now is just turn, return the tenon on there and hope that that glue's strong enough to hold it. So the very first thing I want to do is just turn the tenon on here. So I'm just going in with my spindle gauge, just turning that down and turning that square into round so that I can turn the bowl around and fit it into my chuck. What I'm going to do now is just turn this piece of ash down. You can see there's big splits running down through there. It was just an off cut. I just pulled this out of the firewood pile. So what I want to do is turn it down to a circular shape so it will fit down the side of the bowl where I put the force in a bit so that I can hold that with my revolving centre in one end and it will push up at the bottom of the bowl at the other end. I've never had to do this before and I'm not sure how strong that glue joint will be. It is Gorilla Glue and that is normally quite strong but at the same time I don't want that bowl to come flying off across the workshop. So this is a bit of belt and braces if you like. So I've got the piece of wood set up in the lathe between centres and I'm just going in there with my roughing gauge just to rough it down very very quickly just to get it down to that size so it'll fit inside the bowl. It doesn't have to be anything spectacular because it's only going straight back in the firewood pile as soon as I finish with it. There's a shame that that's split up through there. You can see there's some beautiful grain running through that wood. There really is. Still, that's wood for you. I like say a picture paints a thousand words, so I hope this is self-explanatory of what I was trying to achieve. So what I've done now is I've put my revolving centre up. I put that piece of wood in there. And what's happened now is that bowl is effectively jammed in between the chuck on one side and the revolving centre on the other. So I don't have to worry that much about that glue joint shearing off, although I will be taking some very delicate cuts. Um, it's not a time for the be full hardy. So I'm going to keep my tools nice and sharp and take some very delicate cuts running through there when I'm hollowing the inside of the bowl out. I think what I'm going to have to do is take that, reshape the whole of this outside before I take any more out in the middle because there is quite a wobble on that bowl now. So I'm going to go back, reshape that rim and reshape that curve. So let's take me best part of an hour and a half to get back to where I was yesterday. So I've returned that so it's turning nice and smooth now. I've had to turn the whole of that down, recut that bead on the bottom and sand it all down. I haven't put sand and sealer polish on there yet. I'll do that when I do the inside, when I finish the inside off as well. So now, I'll get back to hollowing. I'm 
as you can see from there that centre post that I put in there just to support the bulb it's inconvenient but it's not completely in the way and it is made of wood so it's not the end of the world if I hit it every now and then Everything's all set up now, we're back to where we started and I can get back to hollowing the bowl. This is going to take some very delicate cuts. Reminded of me when I first started wood turning. It used to take me about two weeks to hollow a bowl like this. And now I can do it in about 20 minutes. So I'm just coming in, just working my way down through. I have to say, when I got further down towards the bottom of the bowl, the tool post did get in the way slightly. I couldn't present the tool to the wood as I would have liked. Um, but you adapt, you overcome. Um, I got the job hollowed, got the job done in the end. And I have to say, it worked out very well. I was quite pleased with it. This bolt and ash is quite a difficult wood to work with because the winter growth rings are really, really hard and they stay hard. And yet the summer growth rings, where most of the sporting seems to appear, is quite soft. And it goes when it starts to sport, it goes quite grainy. It wants to chip a lot, and it's very difficult when you're trying to cut it with a chisel because you're going through from that hard to soft all the way down. Every time you move your chisel down through, you're going hard, soft, hard, soft all the way down. And sanding is an absolute nightmare as well because you need to get a really good finish. Because the minute you start sanding it, the summer growth rings where they're a lot softer, they will sand away almost straight away and the harder winter rings will stay in place. And so you end up with all these ridges right the way down through your work so you do have to be very careful finally got there. There's that big split across there. It's got to be addressed. That was the same as the one on the outside. And it's chipped a little bit at that rim. But generally, I'm quite pleased with that. Quite pleased with the shape. There's a bit of a ridge in there. I'll see what I can get. I'll get in there with my 80 grit chisel. And see if I can just take that ridge out of there. Overall, I'm quite pleased with that. Considering the problems we've had. So we're getting sand that down. And I'll get back to you. I've just started sanding the inside of the bowl here, starting off with 120, go to 240, 320, right through to 600 grit sandpaper. Just gives me a really nice finish on that. Really is a lovely piece of wood. Beautiful. This is the bowl finished. So in the shape. I'm quite pleased with the shape of that actually. Um, sand sealer and Hampshire sheen wax and that's all finished. Well, here you go, YouTubers. Gorgeous piece of wood. Really lovely. And I tried to keep that it's quite steep on there so that people, when they sat on a sideboard or some sort of cabinet, people would be able to see that wood and just 
really show that off to its best. Bit of a trial tribulation with the, um, I've never had the tenon fail before. It's probably my fault, it was a little bit on the small side. Should have made it a little bit bigger. We we'll call it a wake up call, shall we? So I'll know in future to pay a little bit more attention to my tenons. I should have given more credit to the glue because I had devil of a job getting that replacement tenon off in the end. I think it probably would have held it without me putting that uh, post down through, but it was there, so I thought I'd make use of it, just to be on the safe side. A bit of belts and belt and braces. I'm sorry I never filmed the first bowl now, because that equally was a lovely piece of wood. I've got another piece to go. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I've got to try and think of something different. The first one I did, I put on the pedestal. The second one I made quite a steep side of bowl. And the other one is an equally big piece of wood and I'm not quite sure what to do with it yet, I'll have to give it some thought. But I would definitely be doing something with it. Well, thank you very much for watching this to the end. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've enjoyed watching it half as much as I've enjoyed making it, then we've all had a good time. So thank you very much. My name's been Steve Howe. As always, goodbye.